Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be diving into some ideas and theories about the future plots and changes from the books within Netflix's Three Body Problem series. And this video will contain speculation about upcoming storylines. If you enjoy this video, make sure you show it some love by giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. So let's get into it. The first theory revolves around Augie and what part she will play in the future of the series. And this is really interesting because Augie has no one-to-one -one correlation with any book character at this point. Her story mimics plot points of Wang Miao, but could also fit into other places. Her former relationship with Saul has some people guessing she could take over the role of the dream girl that Saul's book counterpart Leo G requests while he's living on his hedonistic mountain retreat. I have mixed thoughts about this because it feels a bit like sidelining her to push Saul's plot forward. Not quite the fridging trope, but I'm not typically into the woman does the emotional labor to make a man better type of scenario. Personally, I think it would be much more fulfilling for Saul to get to that point without the wife plot in the books, but I'm not opposed to Augie being a catalyst to help him figure things out and start to take things seriously. The second idea is that Augie will actually take over the sword holder role that is given to the book character of Chung Zing. And this is pretty interesting. As of right now, Augie is a much more remorseful character than Jin. Her disgust by Wade's actions is fueled by how she feels her invention was weaponized. Discussing whether she is justified or not is something totally open for discussion, but the main focus is to show how tense her feelings are for Wade. The character of Chung Zing follows down a similar path where she feels animosity to Wade for using her relationship with Yun Tian Ming to persuade him to kill himself and send his brain into space. Our TV character Jin hasn't fully stepped into the role just yet. Sure, she's upset about not being able to have a final conversation with Will and even admitting she loves him, but she is also adamant that Will's consciousness is still alive saying, I love him, rather than I loved him. So the circumstances are all a bit jumbled. At this point in time and without further development of Jin and Augie, I'd have to say Augie fits the more stereotypical Madonna role we see from Chung in the books, where Jin is obviously reluctant about the choices she makes, but seems fueled by the allure of puzzles. She's much more of a problem solver rather than someone who is very consumed by her feelings. Without another season to watch these characters evolve, Augie seems much closer to the type of a leader the future inhabitants of Earth would vote for as sword holder. The only problem with that is if Augie becomes the sword holder, what will Jin do? In some circumstances, she does seem to fit the role of AA, specifically when all the ships are leaving in an escapist frenzy in Death's End. A.A. and Chung Zing come across a group of young children and they have to come up with a way to choose who will be saved and who will be left behind. A.A. asks them a series of questions to find the smartest kids of the group, grabs them and leaves the rest behind. I have a very hard time seeing Augie deliver this IQ test but Jin, on the other hand, seems much quicker to think on her feet and would have a much easier time solving the problem before succumbing to her feelings. But to go even further into the theory, it's possible the story doesn't even need an AA character. The role of that character could be left out or split between Jin and Augie. I could actually see multiple projects within the series being split between the two characters, like the development of the space elevator, the fleet of ships, or the bunker project. 
The one thing that I'm very hopeful for is that they end up working together to solve the meaning of Yun Tian Ming's fairy tale. I love to see them solving the unsolvable and some camaraderie between two of the leading female characters. The next theory that I want to draw attention to relates to two more characters. The first is Clarence's son, Reg, and the other is Augie's business partner, Dennis Porluck, who is also involved in Reg's Mars investment scheme. I think the show is setting up Dennis and possibly Reg to be reoccurring characters. Dennis seems to be the stereotypical rich corporate bad guy who is only driven by profits. And personally, I think he would make a great character to explore the theme of escapism. I could see him ripping off a character like Reg as a continuation of his storyline, making the audience dislike him even more, but then using him as a mechanism to show what happens when the rich start attempting to funnel money into an escape and how that divides people on earth. Escapism is a very important part of the story and will most likely be a theme for season two. He's also instantly hateable. It seems like he was introduced for a reason and there was just enough time spent on him that the writers want us to remember him. It also makes me curious if Reg will serve a larger role in the story aside from his connection to Dennis. The Mars Project could have a play later down the road, and it's definitely something to think about going forward. Next up is the question regarding the show only having three named wall facers. We have Saul overtaking the book character of Luo Ji, and two new characters, the first being General Hu Bolin and the second Professor Leila Arich. In the books, we have four wall facers, which has led to the discussion of which plan won't make the cut. To recap, the book wall facers are Frederick Tyler, who wanted to use kamikaze fighters to swarm the alien fleet until it's revealed he wanted to aid them by bringing them water, Manuel Ray Diaz, who wanted to bomb the alien fleet until it's revealed he actually wanted to bomb Mercury and hurl the planet into the sun to leave the solar system inhabitable for no one. The third wall phaser is my personal favorite, Bill Hines, who created the mental seal, creating unwavering loyal soldiers, but then it turned out the seal was actually doing the opposite. In this context of the show, the mental seal seems like it would be the most important plan due to it being pretty essential to what we can guess Raj Varma's plotline will be. If I recall correctly, it's what puts him in charge of the ship natural selection, and I feel pretty confident that there is potential for either show wall facers to take over that plan. I also think the mental seal could be combined with Tyler's plan using kamikaze strikes on the enemy because I don't see people readily lining up to do a job like that. General Hu in the show appears to be a military expert with decades of real world experience. During the announcement ceremony, we are told his books on military history are taught all around the world and he has the unique ability to end violent conflicts peacefully, with emphasis on the word peace. With this information, we could reason out that his plan takes a peaceful approach, which mostly aligns with the mental seal. Having people volunteer to become imprinted with the plot twist of having the volunteers actually believe it's a lost cause and instead take up the plan of fleeing the solar system. Our other show wall facer is Layla Arich, known for her background in fighting ISIS. While we don't know her actual experience during these conflicts, we do know that she has exceptional experience fighting and winning asymmetrical battles. So what is asymmetrical warfare? 
To put it simply, it's typically a fight between a large, strong force and a weaker, small force. The bigger force has a lot of power and resources, while the smaller one relies on the use of sneaky or unconventional methods to win. Typically, the methods used are guerrilla tactics, ambushes, or sabotage to weaken the opponent's strength. With the focus on sabotage and ambushes, Layla could take over any of the book Wallfacer plans, but her background dealing with Isis seems to point to the idea that she has a strong background in dealing with religious zealotry, similar to the type of personalities we see within the ETO. Using something like the mental seal would be a strong way to fight against an enemy with religiously fervent followers. With that said, I do think Tatiana will come back for another season and become one of the wall breakers, and overall, I think there is also the possibility of having lots of changes to the overall Wallfacer plans that streamline things for an 8 episode season. This feels like a pretty good spot to wrap things up, but if you have any theories of your own or any ideas, make sure you drop them down in the comment section and I will see you back next time.